Hey guys, this is Shainu. Today I'll be talking about CSE 6040 Computing for Data Analysis. This is a course that is provided in EDX and also through the Georgia Tech program. So if you're in the Georgia Tech program, in the um, analytics program, um, or if you're in EDX, this can be very helpful to you because it's still the same structure. I have done a similar video to this for 6501 and so if you're someone who's thinking about taking 6501 and 6040 together make sure to watch this video and another thing if you're taking 6501 and 6040 together i respect the hell out of you because man this is <laughs> a tough combination um so uh again watch this video and if you could please take a second to like this video and also the this 651 video, I will really appreciate it. Um, that's how YouTube, you know, recommend these kind of videos to people who are, you know, who might take this class in the future. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk about 6040. I'm going to be, you know, kind of sectioning this out. So if you hover over the play bar, uh, you can see what I'm going to be talking about. And also you can kind of skip around if you like. I highly recommend you to kind of just watch the whole video in one sitting. Uh, the information that I'm going to be sharing is going to be very helpful and this is going to guarantee you to get a B at a bare minimum. First I'm going to be talking about myself and then I'll be talking about the syllabus and then I'll be talking about the homework and the office hours that they have for this class. Then I'll be talking about some good preparation material and finally how to prepare for exams. I feel like how to prepare for exams will be the last thing because um, it deserves a section by itself and I have some very very good tips that I wish someone told me about it way before taking this course. About myself and, and the reason why I'm sharing about myself is just to give you an idea of my background and this class and how that kind of tie each other out. So I did my bachelor's in computer science so I, you know coding is something that I really do enjoy and I work as a technical consultant so coding is something that I do uh, in a daily basis at least in the weekdays. Um, I'm not someone who likes to do projects on the weekend. I'm not that <laughs> crazy for coding. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that's my experience. And I have never, you know, worked with Python before. This is my first time working with Python. So hopefully this is still relatable to people who never took a computer science class. Uh, and the videos that I'm going to be suggesting in part four, which is not the part four, but in the section four, which is good preparation material, is going to be definitely helpful for both people with knowledge and people without knowledge. Uh, about computer science. All right, so that's my background. Um, now I'm going to be talking about the syllabus. So in this class, and by the way, this this website is useless. It's uh, old syllabus and stuff like that. I just like the way this looks and the, the animation. But this is where the syllabus lives, and I'm going to be pasting this link in the description below, along with the donate link. So uh, if you feel generous to buy me a coffee, definitely do that there. Uh, YouTube doesn't pay me shit. <laughs> and this video takes time to make and edit so definitely will appreciate anyone who have some extra money <laughs> laying around so anyway this is a syllabus uh, uh this will be posted in the description below and in the syllabus you kind of get a bet you kind of get an idea of what to expect but i'll be focusing in the grade section because that's probably what you care the most about uh and if, if you're someone who cares more about the class then go in and read this stuff is very helpful for the grade structure we have notebooks or homework that is 50 percentage of your grade uh, they do not drop any, you know, low grades or anything like that. However, they have three optional notebooks uh, in this uh, course. Uh, and those three notebooks really help you. Uh, if you're someone who kind of wait till the last minute, uh, I highly recommend you to change that behavior and to stay up to date with the homework because having a two-week buffer, which is what you're going to have, having that two-week buffer, if you're up to date, is going to help you when you're taking the midterms. Um, so yeah, that's the grade structure. And now I'm going to be talking about the homework and then the obvious hours. So the homework, again, 50% uh, of your grade, they do not drop anything. And for the office hours, I know in this video, if you watched it, I recommended that you go to the office hours for 6501 because most of the homework solutions will be given here. But for 6040, if you are someone who is ahead of the game, like two weeks ahead, this is not going to help you because they're still working with the past week content uh, to make sure everybody's up to speed, at least the lazy people. 
<laughs> not the lazy people, the people who have more responsibilities in life, I guess, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so these officers really doesn't help you. Uh, when it does help you is right before the exam. So when you take the midterm one, just watch the video just before that they post uh, in Piazza. And those videos are recorded, so if you don't have the time, then you can watch it uh, at your convenience. So that's what I would recommend about the office hours and homework. All right, the next topic I'm gonna be talking about the good preparation material. Uh, and this is something that I have posted in Reddit. Um, I actually use Reddit to ask questions about classes ahead of time, just to get an idea of what to expect. And most of the people there gave me like this books and stuff like that, which I'm sure was very helpful. But I am someone who prefer YouTube videos just because I kind of like to see how things are being done and then maybe implement it myself. And so uh, the first video that I'm gonna be recommending is this video. This guy does an amazing job going through Python f like from zero to level 100. This is a six hour video, so you have to commit some time to this. Uh, but for midterm one, just going through this video up until midterm one, uh, this video is gonna be sufficient to kind of ace through those stuff and you know of course you have to do other stuff like you're going to be learning about default dictionary and things like that that's not going to be uh you know taught in this video but for the most data structures this guy goes over it and does an amazing job uh you know explaining things and also he gives us exercises that you can work on as you are learning it so it really solidify what you learned uh, so that's the first video and the next part of the exam so midterm two and and final the focus is more on pandas and this is the second video session that i have again these links will be in the description below uh, this is a one hour video this guy does an amazing job uh, explaining everything how to read uh, csv files and you know how to rename uh, column names and things in that nature so definitely do recommend watching this video it, it gives you a upper hand uh, for homework and also for exams so those are the two videos that I highly recommend, uh, along with, the, of course, the videos that is posted from the teachers and in uh, EDX. Finally, I want to talk about how to prepare for exams. And I really wish someone gave me this advice ahead of time. I, I felt like I would have done a much better job uh, with uh, preparing for at least midterm one, because midterm one was my lowest grade in this class. Uh, so what they do is they give you practice problems and for exams it's open web open book but don't let it fool you if you're someone who who doesn't have that coding background or a computer scientist way of thinking you will struggle on thinking how what to search for and that's when practice problems help because if you go through those you know those problems or those questions um it it, it kind of give you all the you know uh, functions necessary to pass midterm one and so what they usually do is they will say something like this hey guys what i recommend please go through problem 19 problem 20 and problem 21 because these are the past midterms uh but and right beneath that they will say additionally or something like along the lines of that uh, we also suggest you do problem two uh, problem three and so on and so on what I highly recommend you do is first attempt the additionally part, meaning like the problem two, problem three, and so on, uh, and then come to problem 19, 20, 21, uh, because you want to use this as an opportunity to test yourself and to you know to get a feel of the the time that you have to you know finish the exam by. For my class, the time you had was three hours and thirty minutes, uh, which was sometimes enough and sometimes not really enough. At least for midterm one, I struggled a lot to make it through the end. Uh, but but yeah, so use these problems as sort of like a practice exam. Time yourself, put in a three hour and 30 minutes in your timer, and then try your best to finish everything before that time frame. The, and really that gives you upper hand before you take the exam. So that's my recommendation for, you know, how to prepare for exams. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you have, make sure to like this video. Again, like this video, subscribe to the channel because I'll be making this sort of a series. As I'm taking courses, I'll be making videos like this. So uh, if you like this video, definitely like, definitely subscribe. And uh, don't forget to donate. I will uh, talk to you guys soon. Have a good rest of the day for now. Bye.